In this video, we will diagnose and repair a 2012 Nissan Sentra. Generally, AC assessment begins with the blower motor. By turning on the AC with fan speed on high, you can determine if there is vent airflow. If AC airflow is strong, but not cooling, it is time to open the hood and test for leaks and compressor function. If there is no vent airflow, assess the ventilation system. In this case, the compressor was not pumping and had signs of a burnt clutch, indicating a lack of oil and or overpressurization as the original cause of failure. Like most vehicles on the road today, this Nissan Sentra featured a parallel flow condenser. Because parallel flow condensers cannot be flushed, we knew we would need to replace the condenser alongside the compressor. We also took note of GPD Tech tip number 67. It is highly recommended that the original compressor pigtail is replaced when replacing the compressor for the 2007 to 2019 Nissan applications listed here. To wrap up the diagnosis procedure, we also performed a leak test using tracer gas. In this case, there were no leaks detected requiring replacement of any hose lines. GPD offers two compressor replacement options for the 2012 Nissan Sentra 2-liter gas engine. The best method to identify the correct replacement compressor style is to visually examine the number of compressor connections on the original compressor. For this repair, we decided to use a GPD Compressor Kit Plus, which includes the condenser, compressor, expansion valve, O-ring rapid seal kit, and dryer, which in this case is built into the condenser. We also ordered a compressor pigtail replacement as referenced earlier in this video. Before beginning any automotive repair, always refer to manufacturer specifications and recommended repair and safety procedures. And always use appropriate protective equipment. The vehicle should be off, battery disconnected, and AC system thoroughly flushed and vacuumed prior to repair. Step 1. In order to access the condenser, we remove the front bumper and bottom shield. Step 2. Carefully separate condenser from radiator unit and disconnect condenser lines to remove the condenser. Always compare the original condenser removed from the vehicle with the new replacement condenser to ensure it is a direct fit replacement. Pay attention to location of line connections, tube size and tube count as well as location of dryer if built onto the condenser. In some cases, the original condenser may be a different style than the aftermarket replacement and require a different charge amount than the original style. Refer to GPD Tech tip number 169 for guidance on how to verify condenser charge by temperature testing. Step 3. Time to remove the compressor. Carefully disconnect suction and discharge hoses. Be careful to not damage bolts, screws, manifold or electrical connectors when removing the compressor. In some cases you will need to reuse a stud bolt from the old compressor to install the new one. In this case, when we compared the old and new compressor, we needed to reuse the original stud bolt. Step 4. Before installing the new compressor and condenser, replace O-rings. All GPD kits will come with a vehicle-specific O-ring rapid seal kit that includes direct fit replacements of all O-rings and gaskets for the specified vehicle's AC system. With usual wear and tear, the rubber O-rings will deteriorate and may change color. To find the right O-ring replacement, simply compare the size and thickness of the old O-ring by placing on top of each other to confirm fitment. Replacing the O-rings is a simple but important step to extend the life of newly installed components by preventing leaks at hose line connections. GPD also offers a variety of vehicle-specific cap and valve kits that include all AC system service port caps and valves. Any missing or damaged service port caps or valves should also be replaced. Step 5. Replace the original compressor pigtail. As referenced earlier, GPD highly recommends replacing the original compressor pigtail for the Nissan applications listed here. Locate the original pigtail where the original compressor was once connected and use wire cutters to remove the original pigtail, then securely attach and crimp or solder replacement pigtail in place. Step 6. Install the new compressor. GPD 65 series compressors are pre-filled with the correct amount of oil for the system. Prior to installing the compressor, it is best practice to rotate the front clutch two to three full rotations to circulate oil inside of the compressor. Do not remove port covers on the new compressor until it is time to install the compressor. 
Always refer to manufacturer specifications for appropriate torque settings during installation. Now the suction and discharge hose lines and electrical connector should be reattached securely. Step 7. Install the new condenser by reattaching lines and securing to the radiator or fan assembly if applicable. Step 8. Reattach front bumper and bottom shield. Step 9. Connect refrigerant recover machine and vacuum system for at least 30 minutes before starting the recharge process. Again, refer to the manufacturer's specification regarding proper refrigerant charge amount. Set machine to recommended charge settings and allow system to recharge. After charging the system, turn AC on high to check system. Take note of the pulley and belt while engine is running to ensure proper operation. After recharging the system, GPD highly recommends temperature testing with a diagnostic tool like 5811585. Refer to GPD Tech tip number 169 for guidance on how to verify condenser charge with a temp tool. This 2012 Nissan Sentra features a block-style expansion valve, which is also included with the GPD compressor kit plus we are using for this repair. It is best practice to replace the expansion device when replacing the compressor as it can get clogged with contaminants from a prior system failure. If the expansion valve is stuck and cannot open and close to regulate refrigerant flow to the evaporator, the AC system will not cool effectively and may cause damage to other AC system components. A temperature testing tool can be used to assess expansion valve performance without disassembling the evaporator housing unit. Here are two methods of temperature testing to assess evaporator and expansion valve function on a standard TXV system. If accessible, take temperature readings of the suction line and liquid line at the firewall, also referred to as the evaporator outlet and inlet. On average, the suction line should be about 10 degrees warmer than the liquid line. If the temperature difference between suction and liquid line exceeds 20 degrees, this indicates a defective expansion valve or excessive heat load on the evaporator. Another way to assess expansion valve performance is to compare the temperature at the center air duct with the suction line temperature at the firewall. Generally, the suction line temperature should be about 10 degrees warmer than the center air duct reading. Please keep in mind, the exact temperature readings for optimal performance will vary based on the manufacturer's specified superheat rating. Thanks for watching. For more videos like this, check out gpdtechtips.com.